sacred channel and a sacred lotus teacher. Welcome to this video. Today I'm sharing with you a couple of important insights about what might be known as a false contact. I'm honestly not too sure what to call it, um, but that is probably a good description. So the things that are happening in the world right now, the sort of level of intensity, the way that things are playing out, there's a lot of um, confusion about the truth. All of those different things um, that are happening is really quite mom uh, momentous. Yeah, because the planet is shifting and I've talked about this in previous videos, especially my one called um, Bringing in the New Earth. So I really advise you and um, encourage you to check that out. Um, but this time cycle that we're in basically and the planet's vibration is shifting. All of these pieces are very, very important um, because of what's happening in a, in a very universal way um, and our collective consciousness as well. People are awakening to such a deep level that things have gotten quite intense. And this is a natural purification process that happens when you're trying to heal something, collectively or individually. It has to come up to be purified. Um, but false contact though, I'm talking about it because as a psychic channel, as someone that has regular contact with um, the spiritual world, the psychic layers of the world, I guess, um, I have been in contact <laughs> with um, these extra dimensional or multidimensional beings um, that are, there are some races that are really quite well known and others that are not. But so you, just so you know about me and you know who I am, um, I am connected to a lot of Pleiadian energy. Um, that's probably the main one, but also Elohim energy. Um, also Syrian energy, Andromedan energy. Um, and then also elemental beings and angelic um, beings and energies. Um, this is kind of a part of why I have the role that I have right now. Um, so we are moving into a really deep awakening. Um, as part of my connection with my psychic stuff, I get premonitions um, and dreams. Sometimes it will be in dreams, sometimes it will just be visions, um, sometimes it will be just information um but i know when it comes to me in a dream it's very very important it's all important but yeah it it sort of says that the guides and things are really trying to reach me um making sure that i get the message um so in regards to this topic in regards to what i'm just trying to find the words for and i'm going to call false contact uh, we're talking about contact with multidimensional beings and we're talking about a false contact because right now the things that are happening in the world they are very deliberate this coronavirus situation these um, the way that it is affected negatively affected like the economy and people etc it's all very intentional by the current the people who have the most sort of power we all have power but the most influence I should say in our culture right now, who are at the top levels and um, but better understood as a shadow government. Um, so those people in those governments and corporation businesses, and there's a, a pretty icky intertwining there, whatever you want to call these groups of nefarious and um, unhelpful beings, have created these situations to meet an end goal. Um, the first part of it is obviously to create a pandemic, to create that kind of fear. They're doing this because the planet is shifting and humans are starting to really deeply awakening. And so they're kind of grasping for to maintain control. Um, they're trying to control and influence our awakening process. Um, I have notes to the side if you see me looking over here. Um, so. Another piece of the way that they want to ultimately negatively influence and stop our awakening process is by disrupting our natural, the natural way, the healthful way, the truth way of our connection with extra dimensional, multidimensional or ET beings. Okay, they want to take control of that so that we don't 
understand what we're seeing or experiencing. Um, for a long time, it's just been not, you know, people who have ET things or uh, experiences are ridiculed. It's just been ridicule and refuting. Recently, though, in like very recent weeks, a couple of weeks, I think, um, the US Pentagon released footage of unidentified flying objects with statements that basically sort of admit, yes, this is an unidentified flying object, um, which is very different to how they have been in the past of just refuting or not commenting. Um, so that is significant. And it's significant in the context of all these different things that have been happening um, universally in a spiritual sense, energetically, and um, in our societal, you know, what's, what's going on here as well. So when I saw that, I was like, hmm, oh dear, because it is kind of one of the next phases in this, this thing that they're trying to do is to take advantage of our perspective. So obviously the first thing is to just be like, yep, they exist because ultimately what they, they want to do is they want to create a false contact situation where it's like, oh, the aliens have arrived in some way, contact in some way or multiple ways um, that will ultimately lead to a negative outcome. Ultimately, um, they want us to be concerned with our safety and that's what they'll use, just like they have done with the pandemic that has happened as well. You know, giving that power to the these groups and the who are in the governments to say like, yes, shut down my business. Yes, I'm going to stay inside and not connect to nature and um, not connect to my friends. You know, that disrupts our flow into unity consciousness because that's all these different opposites of the frequency of our awakening. And we really need all of those different elements. Um, so, yeah, they count on our survival based instincts. That's what they will use again and again. So if you really want to simplify what's happening and you really want to discern, OK, what are they trying to get out of this thing that's just happened? Think about the most like humany basic reaction. That's what it is. So, um, yeah, they basically don't want us to continue to become aware of the natural ways of the universe, meaning the multidimensional beings that love and care for us. The, the, the love and the, what do I want to say, like the vastness of our consciousness, where we come from, all the different things that are natural to when we actually connect to extra dimensional energy and consciousness. Um, the dreams that I had, um, these are premonitions about the future. Um, I actually had the first one I'm going to tell you about is around two years ago. I had this crazy dream where I was, um, and I tell you the dreams because they're pretty self-explanatory. It'll help understand. Um, in this dream two years ago, I was like running around in this like dystopian feeling place, um, like a city I was like under a bridge and like all these different things and um we were I was running with my friend who is really dear to me and so it was like an unsafe situation so we were together trying to survive and basically there were these ships in the sky first there were these big ships that were like shooting and stuff and everyone was running around and I just knew that everybody was thinking like there's a this is the like, this is the aliens, this is the Pleiadians, like, they've come to get us, and everyone was freaking out. And then these other ships came, and they were like, come, come onto our ship, we are going to keep you safe. And everyone was like, oh, and my friend was like, yeah, we need to, we'll, we'll do that. And even, like, um, people who are kind of awake were like, oh, yeah, it's the Pleiadians, we got to get on the ship. Um, and I was like, there's something wrong here like this this isn't this isn't them this isn't they wouldn't do this this isn't the Pleiadians that's what I remember feeling and saying it's like this isn't the Pleiadians we can't we're not doing that we're not this isn't the aliens um, and then I don't know what happened I probably woke up so you know and that's because that piece of things I just want to note is because in some areas of lightworker sort of information and 
um, spirituality, you know, on the internet and stuff, there is like some talk of this scenario, possible scenarios where the loving ETs come to rescue us in some way. But um, the truth is that they would never do that in that way. That's not loving. It's not loving to disempower us like that and rescue us from our consciousness cycle. Um, so the other dream, oh, it was a vision actually, that I had like um, maybe two months ago was of this big object, like a part, maybe a part of or an actual um, spaceship was like found in this big field, like it was found and um, yeah, it just fell from the sky but the feeling and the information I got about that was basically that these government and um, shadow groups are going to basically um, plant these objects that they already have that they already have stored away in secret sites from their own extraterrestrial contact um, yeah and they're going to plant it and they're going to make us be like oh yeah look there's an alien piece here and they want to control in these different ways because they want us to be in fear so that we will I'm just listening to my spirit guides right now so my guide's saying so we'll ultimately let go of who we are we will let go of finding out for ourselves and so we let go of finding out who we are because these processes are the very same and we kind of it's like kind of like giving that power away and so the relationship that we have with extra dimensional beings will be totally controlled by what's found and what's like showing up in the sky and stuff like that and what the the government or the experts etc tell us about it and it's going to be fear-based it's going to be these are not good things to connect to to ultimately get us to go back to sleep um so I really had to express that to everybody and when I was speaking with my guides about okay so what else do I need to share about this what is the larger story anything like that um they were saying and I was sensing earlier as I was speaking um there's this thing happening with the current time cycle with the planet right now where she is moving into different sort of when we elevate in consciousness or we elevate in vibration as the earth is doing there's an unfoldment process there's an unfoldment and for humans it looks like moving through the chakras if you've ever heard of kundalini awakenings or rising the kundalini energy it, it's like starting at the root and then it goes up um, and so it's like the themes and the experiences that we have are always associated with a particular chakra system which is always associated with a particular theme so it's kind of like right now and this is on a planetary level what I was trying to explain is the energy that the earth is kind of bathed in right now let's say is an energy related to here and related to truth basically related to truth um, and so ultimately if she moves into that we are going to have experiences collective experiences that relate to that just as if, if she moves into a, a different energy of maybe, um, uh, I don't know, the sacral, we may have things happening around expressing our life force energy, um, which is what the sacral can be associated with. So um, my guides are saying about this, that the people of Earth are experiencing a breakdown of their self-made illusions, and that this experience of this false contact thing that's likely going to happen um, is like a test and what I want to explain about that is test is not the best word but when we're rising to new vibrations which we are because we're all awakening so much and we're changing and shifting and it's beautiful um, the universe brings us opportunities to actually to like do that growth right so I'll give an example for me, like, I just, like, stand in my bedroom and say, like, I am awake, I connect to spirit, I am love, I am free, I am free from fear, I am courage, 
whatever you want to create, you affirm, knowing that even though I may not yet be those things in my entirety, if I set an intention like that through my affirmation, or you could just intend, I am going to naturally attract a, the, the light side of it, so more experiences that align to that, more thoughts that align to that, etc. But also, that light that's coming in is going to create a purification process in me so that when, when the light comes in, the shadow is illuminated and it has to get out of the way. It creates a purification and a cleaning process. So equally, things will probably get more intense. Um, an example of this is when I was something around fear I was really focusing on in my personal growth. Um, and then all of a sudden, just randomly, whenever there was like two weeks where there was constantly really huge bugs in my house. And I'm really, I've been really afraid of um, not all bugs, but spiders. If you've ever been to Australia and you've seen a huntsman spider, oh my God, they can get like as big as your face, literally not exaggeration um and we had like three in a row or something like that and it was really triggering me in like in that it was bringing up past memories and things that are associated with feeling a lot of fear and terror um and yeah it, and that was so i had to basically it called me into facing that to purifying that in myself so that i could go to sort of the next level and really be in a, that vibration I was trying to create of I am free from fear. Um, so the universe brings us these experiences. I should add, <laughs> after the spiders, there was a fucking snake. So I knew that this was like, and we never get snakes around here. This was a spiritual like growth point. The universe was like, okay, you want to face your fear? Here it is. This is what's happening now. You want to face your, you want to have truth in our world? Here is what you need to cleanse. Here is what you need to purify. Um, here is what you need to practice how to sense truth. We can't have that truth and that clarity and that clear connection to the multidimensional beings if we haven't yet learned to discern with our heart, which is the next piece of things. Is that um, we want to use our heart and our intuition to connect. So in that dream that I had when the Pleiadians and the negative entities were flying around and I just in the dream I listened to my my own center and I was like no this is a, this doesn't feel right you have to listen to your own center when you get external information from the news especially at this time from the news or outside sources like that even the people that seem like experts because honestly there are <clears throat> excuse me there are a lot of shadowy people who are in that perfect position to perfectly take advantage of consciousness. Um, so you really have to just be like, okay, that stuff is probably going to be wrong. I don't know. I'm going to listen to my truth. If it's not awakened at this time, if it's more mainstream, it is illusion. Um, so I'm just looking at my notes. Um, my guys are saying that we experience contact when we connect to ourselves and the degree that we connect to our true selves is the degree that we can experience direct multidimensional contact slash awakening. Because when we connect to our own multidimensionality, our spirit guides, it comes in the form of our spirit guides who are like a Pleiadian guide is going to be you from a past or future um, lifetime. That's just because it is you're part of the same soul or higher self. Um, so when we connect spiritually, we awaken to that and we awaken to that truth and then we awaken to remembering our past lives and then we awaken to remembering that, oh yeah, I was like in the universe and ETs exist and all of that cool and just natural stuff. Um, so the beings that love us and care for us are not going to scare us they are going to match, essentially they match where you are to receive new experience without being overwhelmed. Okay, and that's one other piece of like in the dream I had and in reality if it happens, how I knew that these beings were not the love-based beings that we would want to be flying around our world. 
because they would never do that. They would never, and this is true for right now, they would never come in these giant ships because that would alarm way too many people. And they would not, you know, with that object vision that I had, what I sense is that they'll explore it and then they'll be like, oh, there's nefarious technology in here. Oh, this is like, they'll make it like it's a bad sign in some way. It's gonna, it all comes back to making us unsafe in some way. That's the main theme. So how that express may, expresses may shift and change, but basically it's to take advantage of fear, to take advantage of like, I wanna be safe. Yes, I trust you, take care of me, giving our control to them, the, the shadow governments um, and groups. So yeah, that is, it's just to be aware of that and to be connected to your truth when you take in any outside information to understand that beings that love us they're going to match where we are so and that happens with all the ways that you experience them like you know there's a lot of people like how i want my spirit guide to just appear and it's like yes but also if you just had like a random sort of see-through person at the end of your bed at night you might freak out you know and they love you they love you so much they're not they're not gonna do that maybe they'll let you see like a bit of their head one night or something and they see how you go and so you get these tests like me with the the spiders and stuff to just also in a, in a similar-ish way to just be like hey, can you handle this can we grow through this okay we can move to the next level of contact same thing that's why a lot of the um, the love-based extraterrestrial um, contact happens through channeling, through people that write books and share channeled information like me, um, and personal, like just your own connection, meditation, meditative experiences, when someone does ayahuasca, all these different things that are where you are saying, with your free will, you're saying, I've like given permission at least to connect to the spiritual realm. I've given permission to connect to myself and who I am. I've given permission to be open to um, the idea that there are these extra dimensional beings. So then they can say, okay, the permission is here. Or we can approach a little bit. But at every level, they want to honor exactly where you are and love you. And I just, I feel their love. and. They, they love us so much, they're not going to scare us. Um, and any contact that we have with any um, benevolent beings is going to be benevolent. Even if we feel like shock, like um, OMG, that being is like white and bold, <laughs> um, there will be emanations of once, you, once that passes through you. Emanations of love and peace and remembrance, a soul re resonance of like, oh, this is our, like, this is part of me. Because th these benevolent races that have been with us are um, a part of our like galactic history and our future. Um, they're sort of like family. Um, I'm just taking the notes here. So the other thing that the reason that this contact is happening is that um, as we've been anchoring the light in this time, especially light workers at this time, we are aligning to a greater identity of ourselves as beings in the universe. As beings in the universe. It's a different kind of identity of sense of self. And so there is an opening for an increase in contact. Um, so there may be an increase in positive contact as well. You know, in your personal experiences, in small groups of people. Um, you might hear about people. I know that there are groups that go out to the desert and they get very heart-centered and meditate and then they ask the benevolent beings to like you know show their ship or something like that and that has been successful um, because again that's a group of people without their free will like connected to heart being like okay we're ready and the beings are like I can see that you're ready here we are um, um, I'm just taking the notes yes the other piece is to let go of what you think that contact should look like, okay? It's going to be slightly different for everybody 
and even in the way that it unfolds on a collective way when or if that happens um, depending on what we collectively decide it is going to be it's going to be registered or matched to where we're at at the time so if we were totally 100 percent majority of us ready collectively to not freak out when loving pleiadian beings showed something in the sky that could totally happen but from where we are right now that's pretty pretty unlikely so trust in your experiences and believe in your own heart truth above everything else believe in that um and remember that i had a note here um and remember that ultimately i asked what is kind of like the love message here you know and my guides and my spirit was saying that ultimately this is about knowing who we are it's about creating and placing ourselves in a position of the universe that has been we have not stepped into because we have been asleep um and so it's kind of like our rightful position but it can only happen to be a sacred being in the sacred universe if we know ourselves as divine and we know ourselves as sacred and we know ourselves as oneness as well so that when there are other um, beings or races we um, react and approach with love and we understand that what we do affects the whole that's a very large requirement for having um, a collective kind of uh, universal position as a race, I'm trying to find the words, a race that can be, you know, approached and um, contacted, you know. So that's why that hasn't been happening yet, but it will. That's on its way. So remember that these false contact things are a kind of purification of our ability to see through illusion. And we can do that if we connect to our heart. And we listen to our intuition and yeah I'm probably gonna keep making videos whenever I get a premonition or a vision because they are increasing lately and um, yeah it's very interesting I don't know what's going to come next um, but I really take my role very seriously um, to it's I say it all the time that each of us our our responsibility is to our purpose because your purpose is your gift to the collective so if I love the world and I care about the world I step into the role even if it's confusing even if I'm scared even if I feel weird talking to a camera we each have a beautiful role to offer especially at this time so we can arrive in unity together And I send everybody love and peace and unity and truth that you already are. Thank you for being here. Please like and subscribe and comment as that helps support my channel. You can also access um, these sacred sessions that I offer, medical intuition and psychic channeling to your spirit guides, your extra dimensional family um, on my website, beckluminary.com. Thank you very much and I'll see you soon.